Welcome to Immerse Messiah Reading for Week 15, Day 74. Immersed in 2nd and 3rd John. Traveling teachers often visited the communities of Jesus' followers throughout the Roman world. But some of these teachers brought a different message about Jesus than was originally shared. They taught that he hadn't come to earth in a real body. As a result, some churches were now refusing to receive the teachers who taught the true message about Jesus. John responds to these issues by writing two brief letters to the churches in the same area as those addressed in the letter known as 1 John. The author refers to himself as the elder. However, it's clear from the language, style, and themes that the author is the same as the author of the Gospel of John and 1 John, traditionally identified as John the Apostle. In the letter known as 2 John, the Apostle addresses a lady and her children, most likely referring metaphorically to one of the churches and the believers in it. John has just received a visit from some of them and is delighted to learn that they are faithfully following the truth of the gospel. But apparently, they also reported that certain false teachers had arrived, expecting to receive lodging, meals, and perhaps even funds to get them to their next destination. John strictly warns the church not to support or encourage those who do not teach accurately about Christ. The letter known as 3 John is addressed to a man named Gaius, presumably in a different church, who had recently hosted some of the true teachers in his home. Those teachers reported this to John, who writes to thank Gaius and encourage him to continue doing this good work. Unfortunately, a leader named Diotrephes is refusing to host the true teachers and is forcing anyone who supports them to leave the church. John urges Gaius not to let this bad example influence him, but rather to continue showing hospitality to those faithful traveling teachers. In both letters, John expresses his hope to see the recipients soon. Even though John has much more to say, these letters are brief because he wants to share his message in person. He's doing all he can to ensure that the resources of the churches go to support only those who are following the truth. The Letter of 2 John This letter is from John, the Elder. I'm writing to the chosen lady and to her children, whom I love in the truth, as does everyone else who knows the truth, because the truth lives in us and will be with us forever. Grace, mercy, and peace, which come from God the Father and from Jesus Christ, the Son of the Father, will continue to be with us who live in truth and love. How happy I was to meet some of your children, and find them living according to the truth, just as the Father commanded. I'm writing to remind you, dear friends, that we should love one another. This is not a new commandment, but one we have had from the beginning. Love means doing what God has commanded us, and He has commanded us to love one another, just as you heard from the beginning. I say this because many deceivers have gone out into the world. They deny that Jesus Christ came in a real body. Such a person is a deceiver and an antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what we have worked so hard to achieve. Be diligent so that you receive your full reward. Anyone who wanders away from this teaching has no relationship with God. But anyone who remains in the teaching of Christ has a relationship with both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to your meeting and does not teach the truth about Christ, don't invite that person into your home or give any kind of encouragement. Anyone who encourages such people becomes a partner in their evil work. I have much more to say to you, but I don't want to do it with paper and ink, for I hope to visit you soon and talk with you face to face. Then our joy will be complete. Greetings from the children of your sister chosen by God. The Letter of Third John 
This letter is from John, the Elder. I'm writing to Gaius, my dear friend, whom I love in the truth. Dear friend, I hope all is well with you, and that you are as healthy in body as you are strong in spirit. Some of the traveling teachers recently returned and made me very happy by telling me about your faithfulness and that you are living according to the truth. I could have no greater joy than to hear that my children are following the truth. Dear friend, you are being faithful to God when you care for the traveling teachers who pass through, even though they are strangers to you. They have told the church here of your loving friendship. Please continue providing for such teachers in a manner that pleases God, for they are traveling for the Lord, and they accept nothing from people who are not believers. So we ourselves should support them, so that we can be their partners as they teach the truth. I wrote to the church about this, but Diotrephes, who loves to be the leader, refuses to have anything to do with us. When I come, I will report some of the things he is doing and the evil accusations he is making against us. Not only does he refuse to welcome the traveling teachers, he also tells others not to help them. And when they do help, he puts them out of the church. Dear friend, don't let this bad example influence you. Follow only what is good. Remember that those who do good prove that they are God's children, and those who do evil prove that they do not know God. Everyone speaks highly of Demetrius, as does the truth itself. We ourselves can say the same for him, and you know we speak the truth. I have much more to say to you, but I don't want to write it with pen and ink, for I hope to see you soon, and then we will talk face to face. Peace be with you. Your friends here send you their greetings. Please give my personal greetings to each of our friends there. This concludes today's Immerse Reading Experience. Thank you for joining us.